Hello all you programmers and welcome to your 50th chapter in your Java EE7 tutorial series. In this chapter, we'll work on the advanced topics on Java EE security. If you haven't watched my previous few episodes that introduces a few topics, go ahead and watch those now and come back to this episode. Okay, let's jump right in. Here's the topics we'll be covering in this episode. So first of all, we'll be working with digital certificates, authentication mechanisms, using the JDBC realm for user authentication and securing application clients. So working with digital certificates. Digital certificates are like the driver's license of the internet. Before you send in any private information like your name, credit card number, or location, it's probably a good idea to check if the website is what they say they are. These digital certificates are digitally signed by the owner of the application and are very difficult to forge, making them a perfect sign if the website you're using is safe or not. Now, most times authentication is not much of a concern, so you can safely save a lot of time and money by getting a self-signed certificate rather than a CA certificate authority one. This way, you can ensure that data being sent to the application is private and secure. SSL or secure service layer uses public key cryptography, which uses a key pair of private key and a public key. This makes transactions private and trustful. Thankfully, Glassfish server has already created a certificate for you, so you don't have to worry about creating a new one. Now let's talk about client authentication and mutual authentication mechanisms. Client authentication, you can think of as a passport for your client. A client can go to a CA and ask for its own public keys certificate. This allows servers to quickly authenticate the user without having to check for a username and password. And this method is much more secure than basic and form authentic authentication that we've seen before. Mutual authentication is more like when the client and the server check each other if both of them are authentic. You can do this in one of two ways, either a certificate-based or a username-based authentication. And this is what certificate-based authentication looks like. First of all, our client requests access to a protected resource. The web server then presents its certificate to the client. Then the client verifies this certificate from the trust store. And then if successful, the client then sends its certificate to the server. Then the server then verifies it using the trust store. And if all of that is successful, the server then grants access to the protected resource requested by the client. Now, username password based authentication is a little bit different. Here, the client still requests access to a protected resource and the server then sends its certificate. But in this case, the client's own trust store will then verify the server's certificate. And then only after that, then the client will send the username and password uh, to the server. And the server then verifies the client's credentials using its own server key store. If the verification is successful, the server grants access to the protected resource requested by the client. Now let's talk about using JDBC Realm for user authentication. An authentication realm, sometimes called a security policy domain or security domain, is a scope over which an application server defines and enforces a common security policy over a collection of users. Essentially what that means is all these users that are underneath this authentication realm umbrella will have the same amount of security policies. A realm can be thought of as a database of usernames and passwords that identify valid users of a web application or set of web applications with an enumeration of the list of roles associated with each valid user. We'll be using Glassfish server's own authentication realm, the file realm. Now let's secure our application clients. Finally, an application client makes use of an authentication service provided by the application client container for authenticating its users. An application client can provide a class called a login module to gather authentication data, or you can programmatically authenticate as well. An application client uses the Java Authentication and Authorization Service, or JAS, to create login modules for authentication. A login module uses the callback handler to both gather input, such as password or smart card pins from users and to supply information, such as status information to users. 
or you can use programmatic ways to secure your application clients if the methods before don't suit your needs. And that's it. That's all there is about the advanced topics on the Java EE security. In the next chapter, we'll be taking a look at transactions and all the stuff that supports Java EE on its feet. Until then, I will see you in the next video.